Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Easter, still. As we gather for worship this Sunday of the fourth Sunday of Easter, we do so with anticipation and longing. On a spiritual level, we anticipate the day of Christ's return, even as we celebrate his resurrected life among us. We long for peace and renewal that only the Good Shepherd can offer us. In our daily lives, we eagerly anticipate a time when we can leave our homes safely and, and the threat of coronavirus is no more. We long for the days of fellowship and breaking bread together again with our friends and our family and as a church. Despite the loosening of some restrictions by our governors, a return to normal still seems a very long ways off until there's testing and a vaccine. So still, we wait. But as scripture reminds us, we do not wait in vain. Our waiting is in hope. Our hope is not in things of the government or even vaccines, but our hope is in the very Lord himself. And that is our theme for today. The shepherd of abundant life who knows us by name, who calls us, who invites us to have life and have it abundantly. Wherever you find yourself today, our prayer is that through our worship service, you may be reminded that we are not alone, that we belong to each other, and we belong to God who promises not just life, but life abundant. We invite you to follow along as best you can. If you're watching live, feel free to, to look up the songs in the email uh, or on another device as you sing along, read along with your Bible and the scriptures and pray with us. If you're watching this from our website later, then the scriptures and songs are listed so you can prepare and participate. Let us just take a moment to center ourselves as we further prepare our hearts and minds. The good shepherd calls his sheep by name. Let us listen for the shepherd calling today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, with you. let us worship God in the name of Jesus Christ, the good shepherd who offers us abundant life. Let us worship God in the name of the one who leads us by still waters and restores our souls. Let us worship God in the name of the one who prepares a banquet for us and fills our cups for overflowing. Let us worship the Lord of life and the shepherd of our souls. As we sing, salvation belongs to our God. Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, praise and glory, wisdom and thanks, honor and power and strength. Glory, praise and glory, with 
Let us join in a prayer of adoration and confession. Generous and loving God, your steadfast love endures throughout the ages. Generation after generation, you offer renewal and rest to all who are lost and who carry heavy burdens. However far we have strayed, you seek us out and guide us beside still waters. You lead us in a path of righteousness and walk with us even through the darkest valleys. You are our hope and our source of life. Today we worship you for endless love as you embrace us once again, our creator, redeemer, and guide. So hear us now as we would confess the sins we have committed against you and one another. Ever patient God, endless in love and abundant in mercy, we confess that too often we forget your love and withhold forgiveness, kindness, and friendship from one another. You have called us to be compassionate, but too often we are cold and full of judgment towards each other. You have called us to follow Christ, but too often we are distracted by our own desires and plans. Forgive us for all the ways we fall short of your hopes for us and renew a right spirit within us. Friends, our comforter leads us to that place where God's table is spread with forgiveness and overflowing with grace. Here we are called to life and to love. We will live as God's people, forgiven to serve, blessed to share, love so we might care. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we reflect on our theme today, the shepherd of abundant life, there's probably no more famous passage of scripture than Psalm 23. We've heard it read many times and perhaps even have most of it memorized. This morning, I'd like to share with you from the version of Peterson, uh, the message version uh, written by Peterson in his translation. I feel like this is a passage that it speaks deeply to us in this time. It speaks not only to our hopes and fears and dreams and our longings, but also to really the nature of God and not just who we want God to be, but who God is. Hear anew this old passage. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I am not afraid. When you walk at my side, your trusty shepherd's crook marks or makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me. All the days of my life, I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Friends, this is the nature of the Good Shepherd the one who knows us best and loves us the most, the one whose love and mercy and grace chase after us all the days of our life. Let us put our hope and trust in this one, the king of love my shepherd is. We'll sing verses one through four. Actually, today we'd like to sing all six, Pastor, to go along with song 23. So oh, we'll uh, we're singing all, we'll six, all six, so today. be ready. <laughs> The 
King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness fail at never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth. And where the verdant pastures grow, with food celestial feedeth. Perverse and foolish oft I've strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. In death's dark veil I fear no ill, with thee, dear Lord, beside me, thy rod and staff my comfort still, thy cross before to guide me. Thou spreadst a table in my sight, thine unction grace bestoweth. And oh, what transport of delight from thy pure chalice floweth. And so Thy goodness faileth never. Good shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house forever. Our gospel lesson today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name. And leads them out. When he's brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger. But they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them. But they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate to the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. God's word for God's people seeking faithfulness. Let us pray. God of rest and renewal, still our hearts and minds with your spirit. Open us to receive your word so that we may come to know you more fully and more faithfully. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Well, as we have come to this fourth Sunday of Easter, it is traditionally known as the Good Shepherd Sunday 
mostly because of the motif outlined in the lectionary every year in the scriptures that we've read from Psalm 23 and the passage of John 10. Neither of the passages we have read are very long, but they are packed with meaning, metaphor, and symbolism. And as easy as the nostalgia comes with the image of a shepherd leading his flock and little lambs gathered around or even one over his shoulder, there is some caution we should take before assuming too comfortable of a position in what we think we know and understand. At one point, the gospel writer himself says that the disciples, that dis despite being with Jesus and having been around them all the time, that the disciples, despite even Jesus using figures of speech and metaphors that he thought would be clear for them to understand, they still did not understand what he was saying. I can relate to that at times. And I take great comfort in the fact that they had Jesus himself in flesh, in person, and they still didn't always get it. <laughs> Sadly, as much comfort as we do derive from parts of these readings today, there has also been much harm, much division caused by other parts. There's a temptation to turn the passage of Scripture from our Gospel reading into some kind of coded message. A shepherd, a gate, a, a gatekeeper, a pastor, sneaky thieves and bandits all get a, a side meaning of some sort. And often the language used to set up some kind of division about who's in and who's out, who can be saved and who misses the boat completely. There's a danger in that we end up reading the passage from a point of privilege, assuming we are the insiders. Somehow we've made all the right choices, and even though we've made a few mistakes, we've ended up in the fold. We never see ourselves as the bandits or the thugs trying to sneak in or deceive anyone. The Good Shepherd is our reward somehow for making the right choices and doing the right things most of the time. I just don't think, though, that this is what the passage was meant to convey to us. Usually when the account contains something like this where it says the disciples didn't understand, there's a clue that we might not always understand and need to dig a little bit deeper, need to have a, a second look perhaps. In this case, the, the thing I think we have misunderstood is that we are far too often making this passage about us. When in reality, it is meant to be all about God and revealing Jesus to us. Sure, Jesus is the good shepherd who offers us a nurturing presence, a, who guides us and gives us a direction and offers protection. But there is more. And it is the more that we tend to overlook. Nowhere else in the Gospels does Jesus express the intent of his mission and ministry more clearly than he does in the verses at the end of this passage we've just read. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. There's nothing coded there. There's no metaphor there. There's nothing but his plain and simple words. This is why I'm here. For John, the theme of abundant life, it runs throughout his gospel in contrast to all that would seek to rob us of life. The thieves and the bandits he mentions. Jesus comes to give not just life, but abundance. Not just survival, but, but life that is flourishing, not just getting by, but thriving, not just existing, but, but joy-filled life. Perhaps what we've missed is that we make the passage only about salvation and the choices we make when it's really about that more, something a lot more. Salvation only as forgiveness of sin is, is wonderful, of course, but if that is all we understand salvation to be, then we're missing out on the full picture of Christ that we're being offered here. Blotting out sin and, and failures is great, it's wonderful, but what about the creation of new life and new possibilities, even now? In these days, certainly this is what we need more than ever. Not just a, a shepherd who saves us for the life to come, 
but one who can lead us through the right now, who inspires new vision and hope amidst all that we are struggling with in these days. Abundant life in our present circumstance, not just the one we hope for. Have you ever noticed that when Jesus speaks of life in full, or even salvation itself, the operative terms that he uses are rarely sin and forgiveness, but rather life, light, and love, and more. Which leads me to think that, that maybe we've narrowed how we understand and, and talk about salvation. Maybe we've narrowed what Jesus' definition of salvation is and what he brings to us. All who enter by me, Jesus says, will be saved. Now we know part of that, uh, the word save comes from the Greek sozo, and it carries with it the connotation of being made whole, well, restored. It's really closely related to the Hebrew scriptures, shalom. A certain peace, but understanding that, that all will be made well and whole and restored now, this passage, all who enter by me will be saved. Unfortunately, it's been used to taunt people for ages. Jesus saying, I am the gate. But how often does that get interpreted as a barrier wall or some impenetrable door or border? He doesn't say that, though. He says, I am the gate, the one who offers a way towards freedom. Whoever enters will come in and go out and find pasture. This passage isn't about scarcity in any way, shape, or form. It's about life. Life in all of its forms. Life that breaks down walls and, and crosses barriers. Life that flourishes in some of the most precarious places. Life that is honest. One that does not deny the very real thieves and bandits of life who seek to rob and destroy and who would threaten our joy and frustrate our hopes. But it's still, it is life that he talks about, life that holds possibilities, life that perseveres and perhaps even thrives in the midst of what can feel like the valley of deep darkness or shadow of death. At the heart of the gospel is the resurrection promise of life and the possibility and the potential and power that we can harness ourselves <laughs> Not alone, of course, but with the help of God and God's spirit within us. We're not only saved from something in our past, but more importantly, we are saved for something in our present and our future. For life in all of its abundance here and now. I dare say Jesus offers more life than most of us imagine possible. Let me ask you a question. How abundant do you feel your life is at the moment? I'm not trying to be clever here. I, I'm fully aware of the situation we find ourselves. First, no toilet paper, still hardly any disinfectant or sanitizer, and now no fresh meat. We don't seem to have abundance of much of anything except pent-up frustrations and fears. Often we measure abundance, though, by comparison Comparison of what we have or don't have compared to what we wish we had or don't have. By what we long for. I'm asking something different here, though. What if we were to measure abundance by something else? It's hard right now. Despite all the blessings that we can surely count and even the ones that we don't see or even know, there is still a sense that circumstance has robbed us of something. The sheltered life we are living does not feel as abundant as the one we had planned to be living in these days. I'm sure we can all find things to be thankful for, but there is also a sense of loss that we feel deeply Maybe it's a physical loss, a loved one, a job, a, a relationship. Or maybe it's something else, loss of certain freedoms or simply a way of doing things. Or maybe it's just a sense of grief about all that is changing and, and all that we still don't know. As the school year wraps up, I am keenly aware of all the students out there who are, are graduating 
and will be missing the opportunity to say goodbye to fellow classmates they have journeyed with through all the, the years and activities. Some they will never see again. It can feel like loss, grief, death. As you will soon read, if you haven't already, in my pastoral letter in our upcoming Evangel, there are going to have to be changes in the way we do church, and it isn't going to feel much like the old way of doing church. That may feel like loss, too. I'm part of a community meeting with Lake Township and others. We have the mayor, the Chamber of Commerce president, and other members, representatives from the hospital, the schools, churches, the food pantry, and other community organizations. We hear stories, the very real fears of people and small businesses, of employers and employees, the plight of migrant workers as the season draws closer. There's a, a growing sense of loss and hopelessness. As we sit around the table sharing, we are asking, what can we do? How can we help? As people become more restless and worried, there are growing divisions then too, not only in society and no doubt among us as well. Those who have means to sort of ride it out are saying, be safe, keep distance, stay home. Then there are those who don't have the means, who, who wish for these things but simply can't afford it, who will have to make very difficult decision, decisions and choices in the days ahead about returning to work or possibly losing their jobs or taking pay cuts. And then there are those that let's say, let's just get back to normal. Let's get back to things going as they were. We can't shelter forever. We can't survive. We won't survive. This darn mask is hot. There's division within households, division within the community, protests gathering amid shelter orders, partisan politics rearing their ugly head when really what we need more than anything right now is collaboration and, 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 and openness to ideas. Instead, there's division. Friends, we cannot let this thing divide us. Unfortunately, we have to actively wait still as people of faith, as we claim the abundant life offered to us in Christ, we should model a way forward that is safe, takes into account the needs of the most vulnerable. We must continue to find creative ways to support people who don't have the luxury of the choices that some of us are able to still make. Questions that keep running through my mind are things like, how can, can we help those who are struggling? How can we work together better? There must be unity in the body of Christ. Now is the time to come together more than ever, figure out how we can use our resources, share not just our talents, but the abundance in our lives too. Maybe the answer to the question I asked earlier about how abundant do you feel your life is at the moment means that we need to take a, a step back and ask a few personal questions first. Using the metaphors Jesus speaks, we might ask, as Debbie Thomas does in her essay on this passage, what is it in me that resists the open gate? Where in my life am I walled off, closed to change, averse to movement, risk, freedom, even joy? What flock do I belong to, and whose voice do I follow most readily? What calls me, making seductive promises that I shouldn't trust? Do I know the shepherd well enough to recognize his voice? Am I willing to leave the fold in order to find the pasture that awaits? Or am I too complacent, scared, suspicious, jaded to pursue the abundant life that is promised? As Thomas suggests, in the coming weeks, many of us will face these questions in very particular contexts of the coronavirus pandemic and its aftermath. 
The temptation to close our borders and lock our gates will be very, very strong. The fear of death will linger and it might completely overwhelm us. A thousand seductive voices will speak into our ears, promising versions of security that have nothing to do with Jesus' abundant life. Thieves will come to steal and kill and destroy, and so much, so much will depend entirely on what we believe about the nature and the character of our shepherd, our flock, our, our gate the one who knows us best and indeed loves us the most. Friends, we need to be able to offer hope. Hope grounded in reality of safe sanctuary. Hope grounded in the reality of love that is enduring. Love that, that reaches beyond and can break through barriers and walls even if we must keep social distance we might not be sure what that hope looks like because right now that hope is coupled with things that we're not sure about. But we need to anchor that hope in the thing that we can be sure about and where the possible, where possible, make tangible our expressions of help, hope, and love. We need to perhaps reframe our understanding of abundance and focus on what it is that Jesus is truly offering us when he extends the invitation to an abundant life and recall with the psalmist how God's beauty and love chase after us every day of our lives, not the other way around. Let us wrestle with these questions together. But also, let us seek the abundant life that God offers even now, right now, as we would together, in the spirit of unity, pull our creative and collective faith and imagination to come up with solutions to some of the problems and, and come up with ways that we can continue to love beyond our, our walls and our borders to continue to offer hope. I can't think of anything more the world needs right now than real hope, grounded in the promise of abundant life, not so far off, but right now. We can do this. Together, we can do this with God's help, the one who chases after us still. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we thank you for being the shepherd of our lives, the one who not only protects and nurtures and, and guides us, but the one who offers us real hope and abundant life. And so, Lord, as we come together to pray for our church and our community, as we are uplifted by this promise of hope and healing and resurrection, we join together as the people of God in all times and place in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy and gracious God, shepherd of our lives, we come to you with thanksgiving, for you are our provider and sustainer. You transform our weary souls with your grace, wisdom, and love. You bless us each day with glimpses of resurrection and glimpses of new life in signs of spring and stories of kindness and perseverance during crisis. Touch our hearts in surprising ways with all that we have in Jesus the Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listening God, shepherd of our world, we bring to you now our prayers for others. Hear them in your tender mercy. We pray for people who are struggling with illness, loneliness, grief, and sadness, thinking especially of those whose lives have been redefined by COVID-19. We pray for those working, whose working life has been changed drastically by this pandemic, thinking of healthcare workers, those in the food supply chain, and all those whose jobs have disappeared.
May each life be touched by the power of resurrection and new hope. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for countries and communities where it is not safe for people to live out their faith openly. We think of the freedom we have to worship, believe, and live our faith without fear or persecution. Let us not take for granted this privilege. Help us to pray for and strengthen those who do not have such a luxury. May all people of faith be granted the freedom to praise without fear. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people in the world who are victims of discrimination and acts of hatred. We remember those unjustly blamed for, for the pandemic. We think of, of the ways society may even treat those who have had the virus and who have recovered but remain isolated and alone and now labeled. May your desire for justice be made known and lived out. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our congregation and all people who make up your church, wherever it gathers, forced now to consider how to be faithful in difficult times and consider new rituals and, and practices that would lead us deeper in faith and appreciation of all that is sacred. Let us not fear change of the unknown, but look forward in anticipation for the new things you want to do among us. May we discover new ways to be your Easter people in the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, our friends, and for ourselves. May each of us know the power of your compassion and promise. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our maker, our redeemer, and our ever-present help, hear our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and grant us the grace and the courage to not only live out the abundant life you offer us, but also to share it with others. We offer our prayers in Jesus' name, remembering together the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we sing our song of promise in Christ alone, please note that the words are changed a little bit and you should have the correct version. But consider the ways in which this song is so very true, where our hope rests in Christ and in Christ alone for abundant life here, now, and forever. alone my hope is found he is my life my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are stilled when striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of christ i stand the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands 
once in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine but with the precious blood of christ in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of christ i'll stand i find my strength i find my hope i find my help in christ alone when fear assails when darkness falls i find my peace in christ alone i give my life i give my all i sing this song to christ alone the king of kings the lord of all all heaven sings to christ alone in life no fear in death this is the power of christ in me from life's first cry to final breath jesus commands my destiny Amen. Thank you, Dan and Karen. I love that version. In this season of Easter, we celebrate God's most precious gift of life to us through Christ's life, death, and resurrection. Our lives overflow with blessing and goodness, gifts which come from God out of the bounty of our lives. Let us present to God our gifts and offerings with overflowing thankfulness. Through our many gifts of time and talent and treasure, may we join mercy and goodness in being in the lives of all who long for rest, who hunger for hope, who thirst for living waters, and who ache to be part of God's community of grace and peace. Thank you to all of you who, who do so much and all of you who keep giving to our ministries that keep them going and offering hope to others and offering hope through very real and tangible expressions of love and zeal and care. Just this week, I was hearing the story of, of someone at the Migrant Center, Laura Weiss, uh, shared of how someone had bought a phone uh, a smartphone specifically, just so that the migrant family could be in touch with those who are far away. But it's more than that. It's so they can be connected. All of us know in this time how important it is to be able to be connected to our family and our friends. And most of us are so blessed to be able to do so via a phone or an iPad or a computer. Can you imagine being somewhere in the world and your family being somewhere else and simply having no contact or ability? These are little things that we can do. The price of a cell phone, something simple. Little things that we can do together to offer hope and help to others. 
And so as we take a moment to consider our gifts, we would encourage you to make use of our website and our giving page to support our ministries and outreach, but also to keep doing those things you already are doing, perhaps to support some of our local small businesses, food pantries, shelters, food banks, blood banks, and special funds that are being set up still to alleviate the burden caused by this pandemic. As always, in your homes or alone or with others, think about the blessings of grace and hope and kindness which have come your way in these days. Reflect on how even while distancing ourselves, we can still reach out to show God's love and presence in people's lives. We can still demonstrate God's abundance. Every gift, every prayer, every thought matter and are part of God's economy of grace. Thanks be to God. Let us offer a prayer. Generous God, we thank you for all we have received from you, which brings us hope and joy. Bless the gifts we bring. May they help to establish your reign in the world you love. In the name of your greatest gift, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us sing our sending forth song, Shout to the North. Men of faith, rise up. Men of faith, rise up and sing of the great and glorious King. You are strong when you feel weak in your brokenness complete. Shout to the north and the south. Sing to the east and the west. Jesus is Savior to all. The Lord of heaven and earth. Rise up women of the truth stand and sing to broken hearts who can know the healing power of your awesome king of love shout to the north and the south sing to the east and the west jesus is savior to all lord of heaven south sing to the east and the west jesus is savior to all lord of heaven and earth we've been through fire we've been through rain we've been refined by the power of his name we've fallen deeper in love with you you've burned the truth on our lips south sing to the east and the west jesus is savior to all the lord of heaven and earth rise up church rise up church with broken wings fill this place with songs again of our god who reigns on high by his grace again we'll fly shout to the north and the south sing to the east and the west jesus is savior to all lord of heaven and earth we will shout to the north and the south is indeed Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of abundant life. So now, dear friends, as you go forth in your week, may the living God of hope and love and peace be with you. 
Let us trust together in God's promises that day by day, God will lead us to those pools of peace where we can care for our friends and strangers, even from safe distance. That day by day, Jesus will call us still to give ourselves and serve us, to anoint others with hope, to stay in safe places for the good of all of God's people. And day by day, that the Spirit will show us the people we might be, the community we might become, when once again we can gather. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, sharing the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen.